you all know Allahabad is renamed as Prayagraj. Allahabad is renamed as Prayagraj. From Prayagraj, there is news. Kumbh Mela. Kumbh Mela. Kumbh Mela 2019. The Kumbh Mela takes place for every three years. For every three years. There is a story behind Kummela. The story is when there was a ocean, you know, they used to start searching in the ocean. Some of the elixir drops or honey drops have fallen to the earth in four places. In four places. So, these four places for every three years, each place on rotation, they will conduct Kumbh Mela. They will conduct Kumbh Mela. And uh, Huyen Sang, the Chinese pilgrim, have wrote, written about Kumbh Mela 2000 years back. Huyen Sang have mentioned about Kumbh Mela 2000 years back. 2000 years back. And uh, every year, ev for every three years, Kumbh Mela will be conducted. Ganga at Haridwar. Ganga at Haridwar. Ganga Yamuna Saraswati, Triveni Sangamam, at Prayagraj, Allahabad. Ganga Yamuna Mythological Saraswati. There is no evidence for Saraswati now. Now there is no Saraswati river. Ganga Yamuna Saraswati, Prayagraj. Godavari, Nasik. Godavari Nasik, Shipra Ujjain, S H I P R A, Shipra Ujjain. There are four places. Each place will come again for every 12 years. For every three years, there will be Kumela in each of the four places. Ganga in Haridwar, Ganga Emuna Saraswati in Prayagraj, Godavari Nasik, Shipra in Ujjain. And uh, the Kumbh Mela, the history of Kumbh Mela is 2000 years old. The history of Kumbh Mela is 2000 years old. Kumbh Mela takes place on the dates when nectar is said to be fallen to the river. Nectar have fallen to the river. So, each year the dates are calculated differently. When there is a combination of Jupiter, Sun and the Moon. Jupiter, Sun and the Moon, Jodai sign. This is Kumbh Mela. Okay, so it got UNESCO's intangible heritage status two years back. It got UNESCO's intangible heritage status two years back. And for all of you, the most important question is in prelims, can you identify the UNESCO's intangible heritage in India? One, two, three, four. For example, yoga, yes. For example, Nauroj festival, yes. For example, Kum Mela, yes. For example, Ram Leela chantings, yes. So these, are the, all these things comes under intangible heritage. Okay. So I think this model question will come. UNESCO's intangible heritage. What is intangible? Which cannot be touched, but which can be seen or felt. For example, Charnar is a heritage site, but Charnar cannot be called as intangible, it is tangible. Taj Mahal is tangible, whereas yoga is intangible. UNESCO's intangible heritage. Okay, Kummela, where you get the largest conglomeration of people, largest conglomeration. So, this is very important, Kummela. The next important news, one third of the UN workers and staff, one third of the UN workers and staff said that they were sexually harassed in past two years. In a survey they said that one third of the UN workers and staff said that they were sexually harassed in past two years. The survey comes amid of Me Too campaign. Throughout the world we are seeing a very big movement called Me Too movement. And in this 
We also have seen the recent survey in the UN, UN staff and workers where one third of them have complained that in the last two years they have faced sexual harassment. It's a very serious issue. It's a very serious issue which you can use in our mains. Next important thing for prelims, who will give SR report? SR. Annual status on education report 2018. Who will give this report? Anyone? There is an NGO called Pradam. Pradam. There is an NGO called Pradam. Annual status on education report 2018. Two days back released. It was given by an NGO called Pradam. The report found that there is a very little improvement in learning skills. Enrollment ratio is very good, continuing at 96%. Enrollment ratio is very good, continuing at 96%. And the positive thing is gender gap got decreased. Gender gap got decreased in education. Means equal status in educa primary education to boys and girls. And other welcoming thing is increasing the toilet facilities for girl children. Increasing the toilet facilities for girl children. So, there are lot of good things in SR report, but lot of qualitative aspects also, negative qualitative aspects. One is, majority of the children who pass 8th class cannot do basic maths. Majority of the children who pass 8th class cannot do basic maths. Majority of the children who pass 8th class cannot do basic maths. And 56% of the students who passed class 8th, cannot divide three digit number with one digit number 56 percent of the students in class 8 cannot divide three digit number in by one digit number single digit 72 percent of the children in class 5th cannot do divisions at all 72 percent of the children in class 5th 5th class cannot do divisions at all 70 percent of the children in the third class cannot do subtractions at all 70 percent of the class each students cannot do subtractions at all. So, the quality part of our education is lagging. The quality part is lagging. So, SR report, who will give SR report is the prelims question and the quality of education is the mains question. It is a very important mains question. And next important thing is Citizenship Amendment Bill 2000. 16. Citizenship Amendment Bill 2016. In this Citizenship Amendment Bill 2016, you all know that citizenship is given to the illegal migrants. In this bill, it was mentioned that to the illegal migrants who have come from Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh. Pakistan, Afghanistan, Bangladesh. From six minority communities. From six minority communities. Hindus, six. Buddhist, Jains, Parsis, Christians. Hindus, Sikhs, Buddhist, Jains, Parsis, Christians. But unfortunately, but unfortunately, uh, or we can say, we cannot comment on it, but still, Muslims have not been given. Muslims have not been given. And that to persecuted minorities. Persecuted minorities. And second thing, in the Northeast, in Assam, people are agitating against this because you are allowing the people who stayed illegally for 6 years. 6 years. Earlier it was 11 years. And it is only persecuted minorities. But there is no proper definition that who is a persecuted minority. Who, no, nobody can say who is a persecuted minority. Other important news is, good news actually. Uh, in Sikkim, every family gets a government job. In Sikkim, one government job, one family. For every family, there will be a government job. Recently, Sikkim Chief Minister, Mr. Pawan Chamling, announced that one government job for every family. But that is possible in Sikkim because Sikkim is a very small state. Sikkim is a very small state. I think around 6 to 7 lakh population. Very small state. Not more than 6 lakh, 7 lakh population. And in Sikkim, 71% of government revenue goes only to government salaries. 71% of government revenue goes only for government salaries. So, in Sikkim, 
the government for, Sikkim is the first state in India to promise one government job, one family. To, for every family, one government job. Next important news, right to disconnect bill. Right to disconnect bill. It's a very important thing for films. Right to disconnect not the bill, but the news. The news is, in Indian polity, we have studied private member bill. Private member bill is a bill which was introduced by an MP who is not a minister. Private member bill is a bill which is introduced by an MP who is not a minister. After 1970 in India, no single private member bill has been passed. Your prelims question is, which of the following statements about private member bill is right? A. Private member bill is a bill which was introduced by an MP who is not a minister. B. Recently two private member bill passed. B is the wrong answer. Because after 1970, no single private member bill has been passed in India. So, do not expect this right to disconnect bill also gets passed. Right to disconnect bill was introduced by an MP Supriya Sule in parliament. Supriya Sule who is not a minister. And this bill says, this bill says, after working hours, after working hours, in your personal life, you need not answer phone calls, you need not answer emails, you need not, you are not expected to go for other WhatsApp, everything, which is related to office. Personal life and professional life should be separated. Personal life and professional life should be separated. This is the thing, but, but in India, it's very difficult to pass this bill, first thing. Second thing, actually similar situation, similar type of act is there in France. In France, similar act is there. In India, it is very difficult to expect these things. It's very difficult to expect. Okay, this is the other thing. Next important news is, Chhattisgarh withdraws general consent to the CBI. As you all know, Andhra Pradesh withdrawed general consent to the CBI. CBI cannot come into Andhra Pradesh now. West Bengal, now Chhattisgarh. Now Chhattisgarh. General consent to CBI. CBI. They have withdrawn from these things. It is also an issue to think of. An issue thing to think of. Apart from that, apart from that, CBI issue Alok Varma again was removed. Now Mr. Rao is a interim interim director of CBI. So there are many things that went on from last four five days. These are the important things. Okay. So